Okay, you go to Actions, and then you go to Triangular Calibration, and then from there you have to tell it to cut calibration pattern. Anytime during the cut, you can tell it to stop. And then when you're finished, after you've entered all of the information, you press Calculate. It shows you what the parameters are, and you can accept those and lock them in, or simply close um, the program from here. All right, so I'm Rob. I'm going to show you how to calibrate uh, a system. Once you've done the quick configure, your sled is in the middle, or at least you know on the board, and it knows where it is. It doesn't have to be necessarily at home. We then need to calibrate, and to calibrate the standard triangular calibration, your router is going to make five cuts: one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to use a tape measure and you're going to measure how far those cuts are apart and how far they are from the top of the board. Uh, very straightforward, very simple. And so I'm going to show you how you do that from web control. You're going to take, um, you're going to use, you know, I use my phone because it's really easy. You could use laptop, whatever you got, it's fine. Um, click on the menu button. You're going to go to actions. You're going to go to, um, Calibration, actions, triangular calibration right there. It's the, in the calibration slash setup, it is one, two, three, four, five, six down. And optical calibration and holy calibration are grayed out because we don't have, in the original configuration, we don't have the firmware set up for that. So when you get web control, you have the option of upgrading your firmware to do holy calibration. And the goal of this is to get to that point, but I'm not there yet. So I'm going to show you triangular calibration. And all we do is we simply push the button, triangular calibration. And it says, uh, cut test pattern. And it shows you cuts one, two, three, four, and five. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. And it tells you when you measure the distance between these, measure from the right side to the right side. So regardless of what your bit size is, you don't want to measure across the, the width of the cut because if I'm using an eighth inch and you're using a quarter inch, we could be off a little bit. So if you measure from the right side to right side, then that no longer is an issue. So you're going to measure the distance between one and two. You're going to put that in, distance between three and four, and the distance between the top area and cut five. So. And then you're going to type in your router bit diameter. So in this one, I had 6.35, but I'm using an eighth inch bit. So I'm going to put 3.175. So I'm using a Hitachi router with a sort of meticulous Z setup. But it's actually um, just like one of uh, uh, Metal Maslow's. He built one of these onto a, a metal sled and sent me a picture of it. I thought it was cool, so I made one just like it. Um, Anyway, and so I've got an eighth inch bit. It's a two flute upcut, I believe, eighth inch bit. Um, you can buy a pack of like 10 of, 10 of them off of Amazon for $14. And so I'm burning through those. Um, with this bit um, and the router setup, it, it's bolted on, we're ready to go. Um, we simply start the cut. Now, my board is a little bit different because I have a split down the center. Um, the, the sheet that I was going to use for the spoil board, um, the sheet behind here, my spoil board has already been calibrated. So if I go cut it again, it'll be really hard to measure. So I'm, I put something over the top of it so that we can at least see the cuts. Um, and you know, if this moves, for example, I think it's, it's screwed down, so it's not going to move, but you want to be uh, careful as you're cutting your calibration cuts so things don't shift. Uh, and so make sure that it's it's permanent, or at least semi-permanent. And so the other thing is that when we measure these, these are going to be in millimeters. So the thing we have to do is just start the cut. And I'm going to have to help the sled up and over these this um, gap in the middle. But uh, when I cut, I have a, a dust collector that's back behind. And so that's behind. But it speaks until it's worse, so it's really quiet. Anyway, 
this is the, the noise level within my shop. And so once we're on and things are running, we say cut calibration pattern and it starts to move. find that it's good to keep the phone alive while you're doing this because sometimes when I turn my phone back on it reloads the page and then I have to go back to where I was and so I want to make sure that um, particularly when you're extending the chains you want the phone to stay on because you don't want to lose the button. Okay, now that it's done cutting, then we do the measuring. And so it's going to go back to center so that we get a tape measure across there pretty easily, and we'll measure that. So we'll start with this uh, measurement one. It is between cuts one and two. So that's from here to here. And that's 75 and 3 quarters. Seventy-five and three quarters from one to two. Cuts three to four. Cuts three to four. Is seventy-five and five eighths. Oh, that's off a bit, isn't it? Seventy five and five eighths, and then the distance. So I've got the top of the spoil board here, even. So then we measure from there to the bottom, ten inches exactly. Um, I think we want to measure. So just to, to verify, uh, we measure to the top of the cut for cut five. So that is. Um, Thirteen sixteenths. So nine and thirteen sixteenths. Okay, so here's my numbers. My distances were top one was 1924, then 1920, and then from the top to the top of the cut was 249. My bit diameter is 3.175, which is going to use an eighth inch bit. You then hit calculate and accept results, and you're good to go.